Hi everyone, so as one of my most viewed videos is the one on the colonoscopy that I had and actually I've had a number of them after that I decided to do a different video also on IBS which is why I had that colonoscopy. When I did the colonoscopy video I, I think I'd had only two of them, maybe three and since I've had quite a few more, I think five in total and I'm up for another one pretty soon. And the reason I had that colonoscopy was, uh, first of all, because I had certain symptoms that uncovered a very, very precancerous polyp that I almost had surgery for, but then I went to the Cleveland Clinic in Western Florida and a specialist uh, let me know that they could very possibly remove the whole thing via another colonoscopy and it turned out to be true. So, so far I have not had to have the colon resection that they thought I might need and so I'm a very happy camper and a big proponent of colonoscopies. So there's that. I don't have anything wrong with my ears. It's just that I'm using these guys as my microphone today. So before I talk to you about IBS, which if you're here, you probably found me because you're Googling about your irritable bowel syndrome. I want to let you know that I am not a doctor. I have uh, no formal training in anything that might help you make your IBS better or self-diagnose yourself. I am just going to tell you my story. I'm a patient, I'm a person um, I, who has IBS. And I just wanted to share with you how treating my stress levels has absolutely improved my symptoms. It took me around a year to go from having absolutely crippling and awful IBS symptoms to leading a pretty normal life and feeling pretty good most of the time. Particular symptoms and in no particular order, um, let's see if I can remember them all, and they are not sexy. They have zero sex appeal and here I am sitting as if I were talking about uh, drinking a glass of champagne, but no, they are not sexy at all. So my symptoms were constipation, severe constipation that wouldn't even respond to almost any kind of laxative, followed by explosive diarrhea, which is certainly not sexy. And that was really bad because I never knew when it was gonna hit me, so I might be out and about and I would have to find a bathroom. Uh, it was pretty bad. Sometimes I didn't even go to the beach or to do things that I really enjoyed because I didn't know which way it was going to go. I had a lot of bloating that was very uncomfortable and it gave me the feeling also of having, you know, heartburn and noises that people could hear to the point that I've been sitting next to someone and they could hear what was going on in my insides, which was very embarrassing. Gas, 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 but not the gas that you can pass, uh, which rhymes. It was the kind of gas that was kind of trapped in there and it's just going all around everywhere and being extremely painful, noisy, and uncomfortable. This put me in a really, really bad mood a lot of days and I don't know if people who didn't know me could realize, but I personally discovered that the medicines that the doctors were prescribing that had a bunch of side effects, and I'm not saying you should stop taking medicine or you should take medicine, you are the person who needs to go see a doctor and possibly a, a gastroenterologist, possibly you're a regular physician as well, who knows, it is your call. What I did was, yeah, start by listening to them a little bit, but then most of all, listening to my body. And my body told me that most of my particular symptoms were triggered by large amounts of stress. This kind of came as a surprise to me because I practice sports, I've always practiced sports, and I did it because it's a humongous stress reliever. But even though I was practicing asana yoga every day, a situation in my life as a parent had me, uh, my stress levels were through the roof and I did not even realize it. And not only that, I felt the stress like lodged in my stomach and in my intestines and 
I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right in English, English, but in my colon, and it was it was really awful. I have read since that it's like the digestive system has its own um, kind of little brain or the way it manages itself and the stress in one's brain and the stress in the digestive system is kind of managed differently. I, well, I can attest to the fact that after one year of focusing, uh, I don't know if 100%, but a lot on de-stressing, de-stressing my gut, I feel so much better. So I'm just going to share with you from patient to patient or person to person what has helped me de-stress. Very, very simple thing but that has helped me enormously is to eat without doing anything else. Now this might sound super simple but during the day I remember eating while I was sitting at my computer and working. I work online so it's pretty easy to think that I need to multitask and that I can't stop etc. So just taking the time to eat without doing absolutely anything else was life-changing. And now when it is time to eat, I stop whatever I'm doing. Uh, if the weather is not awful outside, I will sit outside, eat my food and also not be in a rush to finish it. And I can tell you that that has very much improved my digestion. I was already practicing asana yoga daily, but for the past year I have also incorporated meditation and breathing techniques. So uh, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the evening, sometimes in the middle of the day I will do either five minutes of meditation which could be simply focusing on my breath or it could be focusing on a mantra or it could be um, a guided meditation. If you are not familiar with meditation you could also use a guided meditation. and every single day doing this for five minutes, although I've gone up to 15, um, has definitely helped my monkey mind, that chatter that we all have in our heads sometimes, dissipate and thinking of nothing at some point is mind-blowing. <laughs> yoga Nidra, which is also called yogic sleep, is wonderful. I was already practicing it and now I've stepped up my game. So I enjoy leading people through Yoga Nidra, but when I need to do it myself, I generally use, uh, if I can't take myself to a class, I will use an app on my iPhone or I will go on YouTube and find the uh, video that speaks to me or the one that I feel more comfortable with. guided me to a state where you're not awake, you're not asleep, but you are uh, very much relaxed. This year, I've also studied as a part of my yoga teacher training, Ayurveda, which is a branch of yoga, really. It is the traditional Hindu uh, medicine, traditional Hindu medicine. So one of the things is kind of about uh, finding balance or restoring or taking your body and your mind back to balance. And one of the things uh, that I do is get up in the morning and scrape my tongue or brush my tongue with my toothbrush and spit it out and then drink a big glass of warm water. That has also helped me a lot. In the evenings I also practice this Ayurvedic habit that is to massage myself with warm oil. Before bed I can tell you this is very, very relaxing. This is unrelated to stress, but certain foods are certainly culprits in my personal flare-ups. And I'm sure that you have detected that if you drink a certain thing or you eat a certain thing, uh, you might get some of those symptoms back. So I do have a couple of foods that I've identified as uh, triggers and that I have managed to cut out of my diet. And sometimes I might bring one in once in a while and if I see that my body responds negatively to it, then I give it up. No matter where you are in your IBS journey, I hope that you will consider stress relief as part of your healing because whether it helps you with IBS or not, stress relief really helps with life in general. If you like this video, I hope you will like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.